it's time to talk about kinetics. And chemical kinetics is going to be the subject in which we talk about reaction rates, reaction rate laws, and reaction mechanisms. And we're going to start this off by uh, just showing a couple of reactions with different reaction rates. Uh, this is the first one. Let me go ahead and show it to you. This is a very fast reaction. And this is a very slow reaction occurring over days. So much slower, but still occurring. And we know that because we are observing the formation of products, iron oxide or rust on iron. All right. Now, back to our slides. So as I said, chemical kinetics, the study of reaction rates. And I'll use my abbreviation for reaction here, RxN, reaction rates. Reaction rate laws. and reaction mechanisms. And our sort of order is, first we'll talk about reaction rates so we can figure out what reaction rates are and how to uh, figure them out, uh, calculate them from data. Then we will uh, figure out uh, reaction rate laws. So uh, what are the, uh, how fast or how slow are they changing? And then we'll try and postulate mechanisms. Uh, and we just saw this first one was the explosion of TNT. And the explosion or the explosive nature was because you took solids and generated a lot of gases. Those gases do uh, pressure volume work of pushing all of the air away. Although, is it really work unless you're pressing against the piston? But still, there's a lot of expansion of gases there. Then uh, the second slide was rusting, and this was a much slower reaction. And if you can think about it, here's a very slow reaction. If you take carbon solid diamond and uh, the reaction would be having carbon diamond turn into graphite, which would be carbon solid graphite. This reaction at room temperature and pressure takes approximately 10 to 100 billion years to occur in observable amounts. So that is a very slow reaction. And uh, but the, the, so reactions can go from in, essentially instantaneous to taking 10 to 100 billion years. So let's talk about uh, how to determine the rate of a chemical reaction. And uh, first, let's start with the idea of a rate of travel, which is a velocity. A velocity is a change of position per time. If we call x position, then a, we could have change in x, delta x, over delta t. So a velocity is a change in position over a change in time and that's a rate of travel. So a rate of travel might be a change in position of 10 miles per one hour. That's your velocity would then be 10 miles per hour. Not too good in a car, but uh, pretty good for a bicycle and very good if you could run that. Now, second, some data uh, for this reaction is shown down here. We have, um, concentration of peroxide, which is a reactant, over time. And uh, what we can see, and this is something that hopefully we expect, is that as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of a reactant decreases. What we might expect, too, is that if we were to plot the concentration 
for the amount of our products, they would be increasing a ton. So, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate what's called the average rate of disappearance. Disappearance because it is disappearing, it is reacting away, of peroxide, H2O2, between zero and 400 seconds. Um, so to calculate that, we're going to do uh, delta concentration of peroxide divided by delta T, and that's going to be our concentration of peroxide final. And um, I'm gonna consider this uh, between 400 and zero uh, seconds as 400 seconds minus the concentration of hydrogen peroxide at zero seconds divided by 400 seconds minus zero seconds. So that's our approach. We'll be doing a number of these calculations. And, uh, but now we have to read these concentrations off of the graphs. Whenever you read something off a graph, do your best. Uh, but of course there is some variance here. So for me, uh, I see at 400 seconds, we have, I'm gonna say uh, 1.72 molarity. And at zero seconds, 2.123, uh, 2.32 molarity, somewhere around there. And then my times are zero and 400 seconds. Uh, so 400 seconds minus zero seconds. And I can calculate this out. And 1.72 minus 2.32, I get uh, minus 0 0.6 uh, molarity over seconds. Divide that by 400 seconds, I get minus 0 0.0015. And that's going to have units of molarity per second. And that is my average rate of disappearance. And really what I'm doing is I'm taking between these two points, I'm taking the average slope. Okay, Average slope between those two points. And you can see that the slope is negative, so my uh, answer is negative here. That's no surprise. Um, Good, and uh, what we would see is that if we were to then do this over time, then we would see that the slope is getting closer to zero, uh, and we'll talk about that more too. Okay, now let's talk about the average rate of appearance of oxygen between zero and 400 seconds. And uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got the average rate of disappearance here, and what we know, since we don't have a plot of the rate of appearance, is that first of all, it is appearing. Second of all, um, compared to how the peroxide is disappearing, it is disappearing twice as fast, or two moles are disappearing for every one mole of oxygen that is created. Let me get that on screen there. So two moles are disappearing for every one mole of oxygen that is appearing. And uh, let's write that down. So A, so oxygen is appearing at half the rate that peroxide is disappearing. Let's get that on there. And that's based on this reaction that says whatever disappears in sort of a multiple ratio, if you will, uh, except applied to rates, okay? And how uh, well, we might show that in a calculation is that, well, we know the rate of disappearance uh, and that's molarity of peroxide per second. And 
we know that two moles of peroxide uh, disappear or react away for every one mole of oxygen that appears or is produced and so we can take this divided by two we we sort of worded that out or thought it out up here uh, now we're going to get uh, the number here is just going to be half 0 0.0015 negative divided by 2. Zero, well, okay, before I write it down, so this is disappearing. That's why it's got a negative rate. This is going to be appearing. So I'm going to take and just write down the positive number. If we wanted to do our negative signs correctly, we could, in theory, put a minus sign down here. To make it positive because disappear would be associated with negative appear would be associated with positive anyway uh, molarity per second of oxygen um, okay and okay so there's a little problem here so first off and we'll deal with this in a minute but first off if we're going to actually talk about reaction rates in any coherent way we want to make sure that for reaction rate, it is not dependent on whether it's a reactant or product. It's a reactant or product. Um, and that, uh, so we'll see that coming up. And uh, what I said was that uh, if we go back to this initial page and we're now gonna calculate it at a later time between 1600 and 2000 seconds, the rate of appearance. Our process will be the following. Calculate the rate of disappearance between these two times, then use this two to one or minus two to one ratio and we'll be able to figure out our oxygen. So let me set this up. So delta, change in concentration of peroxide over change in time is where we'll start. That's going to be uh, for 1600 to 2000, it'll be the 2000 one first. And I'm gonna say that's 0.55 And then the 1600 one next, and I'm going to say that's 0.73 yeah. over so uh, 2000 seconds minus 1600 seconds. And for this one, I get 0.55 minus 0.73. Denominator is the same, still 400. Minus 0 0.00045. Molarity of hydrogen peroxide per second, that's negative. And then if we want to find the rate of appearance of oxygen, it's going to be take that and divide it by two. I'll still set it up very nicely since you'll be doing this on the homework. Take the so take the two negatives to cancel out. Divide by two. 0 0.000225 molarity of oxygen per second 
where uh, we've taken moles per liter, taken out the moles part, and been left with moles per liter of oxygen in both of these cases. And what you can see is based directly on this picture, the slope is getting closer to zero, whether it's the rate of disappearance getting smaller or the rate of appearance getting smaller. They're both getting closer to zero. This reaction slows down with time, and that is uh, pretty much universally true. Reactions slow down over time. In general, that's good. Good. Okay. Now what we really want is we really want a system for the rate of reaction that is not dependent upon whether it is a reactant, not dependent whether it's a product or any coefficient. And so now we will define reaction rate. as a positive quantity that depends on time but not chemical species. And that chemical species could be reactant or product, and uh, not chemical species and not coefficient. Okay, and so we will define the average reaction rate as minus one over the coefficient. The average times the average rate of disappearance of a reactant. We will also define the average reaction rate as one over the coefficient times the average rate of appearance of products. And so very quickly, we will uh, move through a section where we just to convert rates of disappearance into reaction rates. And then we will be talking all about reaction rates. And so um, if we look back at the average reaction rate, between uh, zero and 400 seconds. It would be, uh, let's go all the way back. It'd be minus one over two. Um, the average rate of disappearance, which would be minus 0 0.0015 molarity per second. That would be for the peroxide. For the oxygen, it would just be 1 over 1, since the coefficient of oxygen was 1, times 0 0.00075 molarity per second. Just to show you that we do get the same number for both of these. Zero point zero 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 seven five molarity per second, regardless of which one we're talking about.